That's what we had, I think, the elasticity of our blocks in Drop It were that. All right, so I have this animator and all these things. So uh, now I just want to make sure that I take my red block and add it to all these. So I'm going to say um, I want the red block to be in the collider. And I want the red block to be elastic. And I want the red block to be affected by gravity. Okay, so I'm just, I'm just adding the red block to these behaviors. Again, hopefully this is all really familiar to you from assignment four. So let's run and see what we got now. So we got gravity, collision, and elastic. So this red block, boom, it goes down and it bounces. Okay, so this is excellent. We've got a good start here. Unfortunately, this is not real world gravity. I'm moving this thing around. It's still just going straight down and bouncing. That's because the default gravity is down. In other words, increasing y in my view. So what I'm going to do now is use the motion manager to set the gravity to, instead of being down, to be wherever the real gravity is by using the accelerometer. Okay, remember the accelerometer is always measuring acceleration due to gravity, so I will always know where real gravity is. So let's do that. That's pretty straightforward too. We're going to do that here in start game. So to do anything with uh, core motion, I need a motion manager. So let's go get a motion manager here. I'm going to make a property, uh, atomic strong, CM motion manager. Okay, I need to import core motion. Oops, not core media. Core motion. All right, and now I have a motion manager. And I'm going to lazily instantiate this thing. So let's do that down here. CM motion manager. If not motion manager, then motion manager equals CM motion manager alloc init. And then I'm going to set the motion manager to do accelerometer updates uh, 10 per second should be enough. I, I mean, I'm doing UI here. I think 10 per second is going to give me smooth enough changing of direction uh, of my red square as I move around. But, you know, I could crank it up a little bit if it doesn't seem responsive enough to my moving, or I could crank it down if it seems plenty responsive and I just don't want to do any more drawing than I have to do. Okay? So we're going to set it to be that. And then let's return our motion manager. Okay, so now we have this motion manager. So now, now all I'm going to do is say, first of all, I'm going to check to see if I'm already doing accelerometer updates. So I'm going to say accelerometer active. Oops. And I'm only going to start monitoring this thing if the accelerometer is not already active. Oops. OK, um, so if it's not active, then I'm going to basically give it a block to call me. And all I'm going to do in that block is update my gravity behavior's gravity. OK, so let's do that. Uh, Self.motionManager uh, start accelerometer updates to Q. So we give it a Q. I'm only doing 10 per second. I think I can easily go uh, main Q on this one. So I'll go main Q. Oops. Uh, and here's the handler. Okay, double clicking to get the handler. Let's, we'll put this right here. In fact, we'll make it even easier to see. We'll move this back here like this. All right, so here's our handler. And what do we want to do inside this handler? Uh, let's get the x and y of uh, acceleration. So let's get the x. That's accelerometer data. Okay, that's this argument here to our block. Dot acceleration. That's the acceleration that is happening. And x is the direction I want. So there's the x direction. And then I'm going to do the same thing, y equals accelerometer data acceleration dot y. So now I have the x and y acceleration due to gravity, OK? And due to the device moving, OK? Both. So it's a kind of combination. So that way, if I tilt my thing down, my block's going to go down. If I tilt it back the other way, it's going to go the other way. Right? If I shake it over, it's going to accelerate a little bit in that direction. Okay? So it's kind of like that block is going to be responding to my acceleration of my device, but mostly the acceleration due to gravity. So how do I set the direction of the gravity of that behavior? Well, I have self.gravity. That's my um, gravity behavior. It has something called gravity direction. 
which is exactly what we want. It's a vector, a CG vector, and it just has a delta x and delta y vector, right? So like in math, vector. And so we're just gonna have the vector, well, let's try it doing x and y, see what happens here, okay? It's not gonna work, but we'll try it. And we need a semicolon there, okay? Now, hopefully in some of your minds, you're kind of trying to think why this is not going to work, because it seems like this should just work. But let's see what happens. Anyone want to hazard a guess why it's not going to work? Yeah? Uh, the vertical axis could be flipped. Yeah, so the answer that was posited is that the vertical axis can be flipped, and that's true. Uh, maybe a better way of saying it is that the acceleration of this de device is always the acceleration uh, where it's down this way in the device. So if I have it turned sideways, okay, then my, look at my thing is bouncing. I have my, this turned up, face up, and it's bouncing this way. Okay, why is it bouncing this way? That's because it's measuring this stuff all on this axis. I want it measuring it in this axis, basically, where here's Z, here's Y, and here's X. So I basically have to know which way the user has my device turned, okay? So I have it turned kind of landscape, okay? Landscape left, the home button's on the left. So that's gonna, I'm gonna have to flip the X and Y and go negative Y instead of Y. And if I were doing it this way, which I have my block thing here, but if I do it out the other way around, then it's flipped, it has to be the other way. And if I'm doing it up this way, then it's another way, okay? So basically, which way the acceleration to gravity is affecting my view depends on what the orientation of my view is. So let's put some code in to deal with that. Turns out to be pretty straightforward. So we can't just do this simple one. So let's take that out and uh, to save some typing, we'll do it this way. So all view controllers have this uh, property called self interface orientation that will tell you whether you're portrait, portrait upside down, landscape left or landscape right, okay? That's telling you the view controller. You can also get this from the device, uh, and you can also get an interesting one from UI application, might even be better to use here, which is status bar orientation. That tells you where the status bar is. And that's really probably the most correct thing, probably what we should be using here, because from the user standpoint, wherever their status bar is, that's the top of the screen. Okay, even if it's been slow to notice rotation and it's in the wrong place, to the user, it's still to them, they think that's the top of their screen. Um, but this is mostly going to track that anyway, so we'll use this one, it's convenient. And so here, landscape right, you can see we, we're sw swapping the X and Y, you see? This is the X and I'm using the Y, right? And so both of the landscapes we're doing that in. And then whether Y is negative or positive depends, you know, we know Y increases as we go down, so it just depends on whether we're portrait upside down or portrait right side up. Um, and same thing for landscape. So you can look at these, stare at these later and convince yourself that these are the right X's and Y's, but you can just see that we're using different ones depending. So let's see how this works. Let's get ourselves into a eh, nice orientation here. Just let me clear. All right, so now it's bouncing down, and now if I tilt it, see, it's going off to the side, or I tilt it the other side, or tilt it this way, or down. So now it's following me. Well, however I tilt my device, it is following that gravity. And I can kind of use it to accelerate faster and faster even. See that? Okay, so this is exactly what I want. I've got this thing so that I can control where my red block goes, depending on how I tilt my device. Okay, now I've locked my user interface uh, orientation here. Watch, if I unlock it, then it's a little disconcerting because Okay, I'm clicking here, now I turn, and whoop, my status bar moved, whoop, but it's still working, okay? Because every time I get an update, it's, all, it's still readjusting to where down is, okay? It's a little disconcerting to the user. If I were a user and I were really playing this game, I would probably, you know, lock my uh, thing into some orientation. Where is that switch? Here it is. Like this, it'd just be a little more fun to play this game if it wasn't constantly switching my status bar, but it's still working, it's just a little... Okay, this is better. Make sense? What we're doing so far? Question? Can you programmatically do rotation lock now? Uh, the question is, can you programmatically do rotation lock? Well, you kind of can, because you can specify that your application only works in certain orientations, right? And so by doing so, then you can basically do pro uh, orientation lock. 
So uh, I don't know that there's a way to kind of say lock it in the current orientation, like wherever. I, I'm not sure there's a way to do that. It might be, but I, I don't know offhand. All right. So now we got this thing bouncing and responding to our thing. That's a good idea. One thing I'm going to do also here is um, I'm going to set the gravity direction before we start equal to uh, vector make zero, zero. That's because I'm going to be starting this thing going off. I don't want before the first one goes off for me to have any kind of downward uh, acceleration. So I'm going to basically set it so we have no gravity, and then I'm going to start this accelerometer to get the, this going. So that's good. All right. Uh, this would be kind of cool if we added another block. So let's put another block in here. I'm going to create a black block. So I'm going to go up here. At time property, uh, atomic. Actually, might as well make these weak. If they, go, if they leave the uh, view hierarchy, then we'll clean them up. Black block. Notice I made these behaviors all weak as well. Why did I make these weak? Well, because if this dynamic animator isn't holding on strongly to them, then I don't want them. <laughs> okay. Same thing when we make an outlet weak, right? If the view hierarchy isn't holding on to them, and since I'm not doing storyboards here, I'm doing code, I'm still kind of doing the same thing. I don't want my red and black block to be around if I take them out of the view hierarchy. Um, all right, so let's make my black block. Actually, it's very similar. Let's copy and paste my red block. Black block. Yeah, we'll do this. Oops. Oh, well, that's interesting. Okay. Oh, that's very strange. Okay, black block. And then here's another black block. And the black block wants to be black. And um, we're going to have the black block do the collider, but I'm not going to have it be as elastic, nor am I going to have it do the gravity. So the black block, the only thing that's going to make the black block move is if we hit it with the red block. Okay, that's the only thing that can impart, or if it collides with the edge, it'll get a little bit of uh, reactive thing. But that's basically it. This is black. All right, so let's put that black block on there. And it, let's not have them both start in the center. So we'll have that one start at minus 100, and this one start at plus 100. So let's see what this looks like. We add a black block to our red block. OK, so now if I can hit it, see, you can see that they're both bouncing around. The red one um, has more elasticity, so it bounces off quite a bit more powerfully than the black block, okay? But I can still try and get that black block moving. So now you could imagine turning this into a game pretty quick, which is uh, the object of the game is to keep that black block moving, okay? The more you can make that black block move, the more points you get. So let's go add some score. Let's add a score to this game, okay? Now, this part is not really that much of a learning exercise, so I'm going to just type that in real fast. You can go look at this later. It's got a whole bunch of properties involved in keeping score like that. And all we need to do in our code is update the score. And I'm going to update my score uh, when the accelerometer goes off. That's 10 times a second. That seems like a good rate to me. So I'm just going to update my score there. So let's look at that. All this scorekeeping does is just keeps track of where the block block is, how long it's been doing that, and then it puts the score in the middle there, you can see. And it keeps both the current score and your highest score so far with this block. So, so if, you don't, if you let the black block stay there and you don't hit it, you can see that my score is going to start going down pretty soon. See, it's going down. But if I start hitting it again, 